Hi, everyone. It's Judy Warner. Welcome back to this week's Ecosystem Podcast. Today, I'm joined by Olaf Hichwa, who's the co-founder of Nero's Technology. Olaf and his co-founder have set their sights of being the largest producer of U.S. fully American-made drones. And we are going to talk about his origin story from a drone racer to drone executive. I think you're going to love this story. Now let's jump into our conversation. Hi, Ola. So great to have you today. I can't wait to share you with our audience. So before we get started, let's jump right in and tell our audience a little bit about who you are and um, who your company, Neros, is. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm, I'm Olaf, co-founder CTO here at Neros. And um, Neros is a, a drone company here in the States building unmanned superiority at scale. And so what that means is we are really focused on mass producing defense systems so that America can maintain her, uh, her dominance in the, in the world theater. The way we're achieving that right now is through FPD drones, racing drones uh, that have a, a purpose in, in defense applications as well. Um, so, so far in about 18 months uh, since our, you know, initial trip to Ukraine where we deployed some of these systems, we've been able to um, produce a vertically integrated drone that includes uh, custom U.S.-made electronics, including radio systems that are optimized around anti-jam specifically, and really produce that at scale. We actually recently closed a 6,000 unit production contract, making us the highest rate producer of UAVs in America. Um, and we're doing that all right here in sunny Southern California in El Segundo, based on our in-house designs for custom flight computers, BLDC motor drivers, ground stations, airside radios, the whole gamut of electronics is done here at Neuros. Give us a brief overview of how you went from professionally racing drones to um, world theater uh, unmanned drones for the military here in the U.S. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I built my first drone when I was 12 and I'd say my EE addiction started then. I just wanted to make the drones faster. Best way to make them faster was to design circuits. So started designing uh, you know boards in easy EDA, uh, then emailed uh, some poor Altium rep every day until they gave me a, a student license in, in high school and started designing in, in Altium from there. Um, various drone components, sort of small business in high school, making these drones work. And when uh, my you know future co-founder, teammate from drone racing came to me with this idea of, hey, let's take that, that experience, you know, building drones for professional racing and building those custom PCBs to make the drones faster, apply that to national security by building a bunch of drones, throwing them in our suitcase and bringing them to Ukraine, I was I was intrigued by the idea and uh, found myself in his parents' basement, uh, soldering together some some boards to make our, our first prototype, which we built 30 of and, and brought to Kyiv uh, and handed out to various individuals there to kind of learn more about the, the Ukrainian drone ecosystem and uh, see, first of all, how we could help since we both felt very uh, strongly about, you know, supporting Ukraine. And second of all, also understand how we can kind of apply to some of those tactics that Ukraine has has developed so well to the U.S. defense industry. So how did that first visit from Ukraine um, bring you back to the states and specifically launching Neros? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like in Ukraine, um, I was shocked to see, you know, people walking along the streets. You know, average people had drone racing shirts on uh, from popular YouTube uh, channels about drone racing, like learn how to make drones. And I bought a cookie at a bake sale in downtown Kiev um, and uh, a soldier's wife had uh, made a bunch of cookies in the shape of drones because the soldier had a favorite drone they wanted. And uh, I was like $500 and they were raising $500 to buy that racing drone. So really saw this like entire country rallied around this technology that formerly was just a hobby, very, very niche hobby technology. I actually had the opportunity of sitting down with Deputy Prime Minister Fedorov, who wow. um, surprisingly had a FTV racing drone on his desk. Never thought I would be in a politician's office with an FTV racing drone on on his desk. Um, so that, that was like kind of the realization that this was a world changing technology. Coming back to the States and thinking more about it, you know, FTV racing drones could be a, a replacement for artillery. They completely changed the way war is fought. And I view them like the Manhattan Project of our generation. We 
you know, th th they completely changed the the nature of warfare. I think you're going to see a lot of replacement of, you know, human warfighters with FPVs. Eventually, you're going to see drones running into each other. And actually, you can actually already see that happening in Ukraine. There's a lot of counter UAS, UASs, drones to take out drones. There's videos of, you know, drones blowing up other drones. And we could look back in 30 years from now and think, wow, that was a you know, crazy, crazy time 30 years ago where we sent humans to the front, uh, we could replace all those humans with drones. And perhaps more importantly, um, if we don't develop this drone technology, I think America will lose her edge. I think that, uh, you know, drone pro drones are so lethal, so effective that without mass manufacture of drones here in America, we won't be able to maintain our dominance on the world stage like we've had the luxury of of doing for so long for my entire lifetime. So Muras uh, was, you know, founded under the belief that um, small drones and mass manufacturable defense systems are really critical to maintain America's unmanned superiority. So when we, uh, you know, came back from Ukraine, we talked to some venture capitalists and uh, raised our, our our seed round of funding that was in late 2023 to uh, build the factory that now sits behind me today that is producing these, uh, you know, large quantities of drones. What was the inflection point that made you and your co-founder decide to do? take a vertically integrated approach and keep that all here in the U.S. Yeah. So, I mean, look at what, uh, I guess, two big reasons. Look at like who succeeded at mass manufacturing these kinds of systems. It's mostly people in Asia, mostly China. And these Chinese companies are not afraid to design hardware. You know, there's a lot of startups in the U.S. that are software only, and they will do anything not to, you know, place a single resistor. They just want to write code in. Code's cool. Code changes the world. Uh, software eats worlds, but uh, hardware eats software, I think. And I think a lot of the um, you know, innovation that's happened out of China has been enabled by hardware engineering. We were not scared to, to spin custom boards, right? We spun boards before we had any investment. And uh, that, that's continued through our you know, relentless approach at vertical engineering and designing custom circuits to power our drones. Um, Additionally, I think that this like focus on manufacturing from the start has been really important. You know, from day one, we've had a production line in house, uh, and engineers, you know, are right next to the production line. They are very focused on like making the system more manufacturable and uh, making sure they build something that ships. What I love about what you're saying as a person that has both worked directly with engineers inside OEMs and military OEMs. And then also, uh, I joke that I'm going to die of heavy metal exposure from walking around board shops for half my life. You and me both. Eating solder, too young. Right, right. I, I, yeah, there's a saying that says I have solder mask in my veins. I, you know, so I really get what you're doing. It's just so rare these days. And it kind of baffles my mind when you can get boards from places like uh, JLPCB is such a great cost, how you compete. But what I love is you are serving up an environment where the engineers on your staff really can't understand that end to end design for manufacturing, design for performance, design, design for everything all under one roof. And I think that is such a huge, um, you know, to not separate the engineers from the manufacturing space has got to be a huge win for you. Just how do you compete price wise? Yeah. Uh, keeping the engineers involved with manufacturing is really, really important. I mean, you look back at when I was designing my first printed circuit boards, JLC PCB only offered like two, four, and six layer boards. No SMT. You could only get boards in green, right? They wouldn't give you any other solder mask colors. You could only, you know, uh, use their like fairly coarse, like trace space tolerance saying they had a bunch of like very stringent requirements. And that's because JLC's vision, as far as I know, was to just like streamline the manufacturing process into one line and then condense a ton of orders into that one manufacturing process, take advantage of economies of scale. You see a lot of defense tech, you know, right now, defense technologies, uh, as an example, uh, designing an SDR, you know, you'll order 10 of those or 100 of those over many years. And they're super complex boards. They're HDI. They're really, you know, marvels of modern engineering. And uh, they often are, you know, really bespoke. They're not, you know, copy pasted along a production line like JLC's boards are. So we designed our system from the ground up to use. I and mean, we have like our main board is six layers uh, and it's pretty, pretty wide trace space. So we've designed from the beginning to be kind of um, in line with that, like original JLC PCB motto of just like one, you know, one type of, of line, one very simple um, product. And that sticks uh, across from boards to the actual drone itself. We try and have like a lot of commonality between, you know, 
different units want different functionality. How much can we squeeze into one drone platform that is all very similar? Maybe just a few items at the end that are different. And uh, yeah, just from, from the start, optimizing around DSM. That's amazing. I've been telling engineers to go to their board shop and learn manufacturing for like 15 years old. Yeah, yeah. And I <laughs> love that you are doing it. It sounds counterproductive and it sounds inefficient, but it's the opposite of, I always used to say, if you slow down, you can speed up, right? Like if you take the time to onboard it, you will go three times as fast. And you're basically saying that out loud and creating that right under your own roof. So you talked about software d design radios and why not just use commercial off the shelf components and kind of c put this thing together rather than vertically integrating? Yeah, so I think a lot of the commercial off-the-shelf radios themselves are not DFM'd, really, is, is uh, okay. the core of the problem. You look at you know the, the radios available in the drone industry and the defense space that aren't made in China. Uh, they're usually thousands of dollars and not available at quantity or there's lo long back orders. So uh, by like taking that DFM first approach and doing it ourselves, we've actually not only lowered the cost significantly because the radio is well, like very much targeted towards our you know, low data rate anti-jam application, but also enable much higher um, uh, manufacturing capabilities. It's incredible. It sounds very counterintuitive, but it sounds like you already have a substantial backlog of orders and sounds like there's more on the horizon. So what are some of the challenges and opportunities uh, facing you right now as a company? And let's start with the challenges. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, fr from day one, we've been very interested in shipping product. There's a, you know, I, I've worked at companies where I've never actually, my engineering never got to see the light of day. There's a lot of startups that, that fail, of course, it's the nature of startups, and then your product never ships. So from day one, we're like, what, what can we do to actually ship products? And that, of course, is a challenge, right? Our design cycles are super, super short. You know, engineers have limited time to get product out the door, uh, but that's also an opportunity, right? That's like, you know, engineers can dream up an idea at night and uh, come to the office, cut it up in the morning, build it uh, under the microscope, uh, test it out in the afternoon, flight test it in the evening, and then hopefully ship it the next week. So really focusing on, you know, shipping product has been a core theme. And uh, so far we've delivered, you know, over a thousand drones, a lot of them going to uh, allied forces or our, you know, partners in Ukraine and making a difference over there. So what are the opportunities to do this all here in Southern California, which sounds like a pipe dream, but sounds like you're doing it. So what are the opportunities, do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. So after closing this, uh, you know, substantial production contract, we're growing uh, substantially. We're looking to expand our team specifically in electrical engineering and firmware engineering. Um, we're looking for people that are really interested in full stack ownership. So, you know, someone that wants to get handed a few requirements that aren't like silly government requirements, requirements based on like, hey, when I was in Ukraine uh, talking to this end user, you know, near the front, they said this happens, like that's the requirement. And then take that requirement, bring it all the way to a functioning product. So that means, you know, do the initial trace study, see what what's available off the shelf. Next, uh, okay, we're probably going to design it ourselves, then, you know, do a schematic, uh, initial block diagram, then a schematic, and then do a layout, and then build the board, and then do the firmware, bring up, and then hand it off to the manufacturing team, build the test jig, and ship it. Like, uh, you know, we, we want an engineer that wants to see, uh, we want engineers that want to see their products actually come to life and see their, you know, hard work really count for something. Uh, so if, you know, you're one of those kind of crazy engineers that is willing to put up with the the pain of being at a you know early stage, less than two year old startup uh, that is moving quickly and uh, doesn't wait for for much. Then I think you might be a fit. Well, but you have orders, right? You, one, you have funding, so you can pay for engineering talent. Um, so from the model you're explaining, then you want engineers on site. You're all hands on deck, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're, we're big believers in in-person work. Uh, you know, we're all here in the lab uh, when the, you know, um, EMI is causing issues. It's not fun to debug that over Zoom, right? When when we're, you know, throwing uh, 
traces, we're throwing probes on analog traces when we're debugging firmware issues that manifest themselves through hardware. Uh, it's it's really tricky to do that on uh, online. So we're all in on being in person here, uh, engineers under microscopes, under soldering irons with probes in their hands. That's amazing. I love it. Well, for our audience, if you are an engineer, a full stack, you know, end to end, you want a lot of ownership, but the being that agile that fast, please either reach out to me or reach out to Olaf because I certainly want to help him um, continue to build that. So um, I'll make sure that I put those links for you in the show notes. So um, how do you think you're going to be doing in like a year or two from now, Olaf? Yeah, well, I mean, the writing's kind of on the wall about the the drone industry, especially in defense. It's, there's a ton of growth uh, expected and and actually already realized. I think that um, you know, Neuros is at a really interesting opportunity in that we understand what it takes to mass manufacture these kinds of systems. We also understand very well from you know end users that have direct experience with these kinds of systems what makes them effective, and uh, we're we're ready to put that together and just continue producing these drones and continuing adding features and uh, working towards these you know larger opportunities. Amazing. Well, Olaf, thank you so much for coming on and tell us about your amazing story. And I hope we can send some engineers this way. You want to share a couple um, ways people can reach out to you and learn more about Neros? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, our, our website, N-E-R-O-S dot T-E-C-H dot tech is, is available. There's not much on there because we like to stay fairly stealth, but N-E-R-O-S dot tech slash careers is the, the best place to apply. And then I'm also on LinkedIn. If you know you want to shoot me a message, um, I'd love to connect and talk about printed circuit boards, UAVs, uh, reindustrialization of America, bringing industry back here and uh, making products that actually ship. Great. Well, Olaf, thank you so much. It's been so much fun to learn about you and Nero said, I hope some of our listeners will reach out to you if they're either in the LA area or they want to come and really be part of a meaningful uh, journey with your team. Thanks again for joining us Absolutely. Today. Designing boards five miles from the beach is a good feeling, a great it's feeling. It's not bad. There. It's not bad. It's not a bad gig. Um, so thank you again for joining. And for our audience, make sure you go check out the show notes. If you reach out to Ola, please tell him that Judy sent you. And or drop me an email at um, info at the ecosystem.com or Judy at the ecosystem.com. And I'll make sure that he gets um, your resume if you're a fit. So thanks for being with us this week and learning from Olaf. We'll see you next week. Until then, remember to always stay connected to the ecosystem. Oh, 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 oh,